Hello everyone, welcome to Mr. Tech Tuner and today we are going to discuss about the week 5 of system administration and IT infrastructure services and we also will try to end up this course by discussing about the week 6 or the final week of this course and hope this will be the last course of this week so uh, of this course so hope you will stay with us so first uh, this in this week we are going to learn about the data recovery and backups so in data recovery there are different lecture videos you should go through this but we are going to the quizzes actually which basically you will need for your uh, graded but this is not a graded assignment though okay so first planning for data recovery a uh, first question how can you recover from an unexpected data loss event okay so you can recover data from damaged devices from you can also restore data from backups and second question what is the best to store backups physically you can do this across multiple locations yeah number three which of this should be included in your backups your firewall configuration and your sales databases these two are not necessary number four what's magnetic tape backup media best suited for that's the long-term archival data okay uh, number five what is uh, why it is important to test backups and restoration procedures to ensure backups work and data can be restored from them and to ensure that relevant data is included in the backups number six which of the following backup types are most space efficient incremental backups number seven and the last one you can use raid array and use resync to copy critical data to it for backups yes that's not true that's false you can't do this okay so that's all about the planning for data recovery quiz and there's a quick lab assignment if you you can check this out there's an all external graded assignment but we are not willing to do this because that's not needed for your grade uh, if you think it will help and I will make an extra video about this ungraded external uh, quick lab assessment of this system administration You can check this out if you want, but I will I'm making this video for your easier grade examination Okay, so now we are going to see the feedback of disaster recovery plans number one question What elements should be a disaster recovery plan cover uh, detection measures preventive measures and recovery measures now, this three will be your answer number two why are detection measures included in disaster recovery plan because it is important to know when the disaster occurs. Number three, what are good preventive measures to incorporate in your organization? Redundant systems, regular backups, and accessible and up-to-date documentation. Number four, what are good detection measures to incorporate in your organization? Number one, environmental monitoring. And the last one, system performance monitoring. Number five, what are good recovery measures to incorporate in your organization? Check all the deadline. Okay, so first one will be restoring server configurations from your backups and following detailed recovery plan documentation. So that's all about the disaster recovery plan. So we already completed two topics. So now we are going about the postmortem, which is another very important topic. Okay, so in postmortem, the first question: Why? What's the intent behind writing a postmortem to learn from the mistakes and improve in the future? Number two: What should the timeline in a postmortem include? Actions taken before, during, and after the event. Number two, answer will be detailed dates and time, time will also be included. This two will be the correct. So uh, we already completed all our topics and their quizzes. Now we are going to the final graded assignment about data recovery and backups. So the first question of this assignment or graded assessment is what's the optimal recommended backup storage strategy? A combination of on and off site backups. Number two, what are the measures included in a disaster recovery plan? You know that preventive detection and recovery. Number three. What is the purpose of a post-mortem report to learn from the mistakes? Number four, what is the single most important part of data recovery? It is the effectively taking up your data. Number five, when planning a backup strategy, ideally one needs to prioritize important data and only backup what's absolutely necessary for operations, assuming storage limitations. Which of this is least important to backup? User downloads, that is not necessary, okay. But uh, less emails, financial spreadsheets and database, this is the important thing to backup. Number six, what is important? The standard medium for long-term archival backup storage data storage. This is magnetic depth. Number seven, which type of backup only saves parts of data that have changed in within files since the last backup took place? Okay, so that's incremental backup. Okay. Number eight, cloud services are ideal backup option for user files. Which of this is not one of today's popular cloud storage platforms? Are uh, sync This is not the popular one. Okay, but Apple iCloud, Dropbox, and Google Drive. Basically, the first two are the very, very renowned and popular nowadays. Number nine, you are performing a network risk assessment to develop your disaster recovery plan. Which of these are the examples of detection measures? Okay, so you can test your own knowledge and readiness for disaster. 
using alert system for outrages and monitoring system testing. Number 10, what are some of the purposes of a postmortem to understand the cause of mistakes and how to prevent them, to learn from uh, an adapt process for higher efficiency? Number three, and the last uh, option that will be correct, to foster a culture where it's okay to make mistakes. Okay, so these are the uh, correct answers of data recovery and backups. I hope you will get the full marks. Now we are going to week six, basically the last week of this. Okay, so there is a final project interaction and there's a quiz about the system administration and consultation. Uh, this is basically a written exam or a written test. Okay, so I, as you can see, I have got my 100% uh, marks in this. But you know, in Coursera, there are some uh, limitations or some policy and rules about plagiarism. So I will not entertain you guys to do this because that's really not a good option to do. So I, I will not help you to copy my answers, but you can look at how the answers should like to be. You can mention them by mentioning his tapes and uh, I can give you some shortcuts. You can search in Google by, uh, by the questions and then you will get some uh, web pages. There will be written some of the questions, but this is a kind of uh, question that you can't search on Google directly because you need to read the uh, stem first, then you need to answer accordingly to the stem. But this will help you. Uh, the Google result, search result will help you in some cases, but you can't copy and paste directly because Coursera, if Coursera can detect, they will may they have done something to you I mean, in, uh, with acquisition of your plagiarism so i will suggest you to use plagiarism tool software as uh, sorry sorry paraphrasing tool software so that you can skip plagiarism and happy copy pasting not actually copy pasting just paraphrase this so that's all about the system administration and consultation and hope you will get 100 percent and i guess the question will the whole system administration will end and you will receive also congratulations like that and that's it. Thank you. Hope to see you again. And if this video helped you at least 1%, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And feel free to share if you want. And for staying and spending your whole time.